we need to tell you a little bit about who Kibwe is and how he got to be in this position today. So, Kibwe was a part of Intuit Concepts and Kingston Bridal Week, and I think Maria might have a little bit more, well, background than him, right? So, Maria, do you want to kick everything off for us? Right, right yes. Yeah. So, I um, was right under the Kingston Bridal Week team. And I think 2016 and 2017, and it did consist of Kiwi, Carol, Seanlin, and Nicola Barber. So yes, I do know a lot about Kingston Bridal Week. I would describe it as a bridal convention where um, all the vendors for weddings come together and display what they have to offer. So Kiwi, it's been about 10 years since the first staging of Kingston Bridal Week, right? So what did it take to come up with such a concept and build out an event, organize it, market it? So, okay, the Kingston Bridal Week is a really funny story. In fact, we started first with a one-day concept called Wedding Spectacular. So we had approached Pegasus at the time, um, and they had a new director of sales. And we went to her and we wanted to produce this women's convention. And she said, you know, guys, and that time it was just Sean Lynn and myself. She said, guys, if you produce a wedding show, I will literally give you the venue for free. So, of course, you know, being young entrepreneurs, the idea of free sounded very exciting. Um, and what's really interesting is that she gave us someone from her sales team, from her wedding department, and she listed out all of these exhibitors and we were paying her and possibly around maybe a week to the event, you know, we looked at the list and we're so excited because it had like three vendors on top and then you had another, not another vendor, you had a title that said all wrapped up and it had like an underline and then like about 50 vendors below. So we were excited. So like possibly the day after we're like, all right, so we need these contacts and have these people paid yet. So the lady goes, no, only three of these people have paid it. But we're like, but hold on. It says all wrapped up. And then all of those vendors, she goes, no, all wrapped up is actually a store. So at that point, you know, we were in trouble um, because we only had three vendors. And we had this entire ballroom that was to have 50 vendors. So Sean Lynn and myself, you know, we literally jumped into that thing head first and, you know, went on a selling spree. And the lessons that I learned from there would have been lessons that I take across to any business at this point, because you can no longer just rely on a salesperson. So, so, so as leaders, we had to jump into that ship. We had to go right back down. We had to start selling. We had to connect one with the merchants and then also with the consumers. So that taught us two sides of the story immediately. So we, we, we got the business perspective and we got the consumer perspective. And then also it taught us a lesson in management. You can never leave everything up to one person. And if you are the lead of your ship, then you have to know up to what the tiniest person in your organization is doing. That becomes super important. So the lesson, the biggest lesson learned from that um, was the fact that after that event, we lost $1.3 million dollars. And I tell this story all the time to like the students that I currently mentor. I was like, at that point, we could have stopped. It could have ended right then and there. Six months later, we sit down with Kara and we sit down with Nicola and we dared to put on a seven day bridal show. This was after the one day bridal show lost by $1.3 million. And you have to understand as, as 20 year olds that time, that was like a big blow. That was like, run to mom and dad. I was like, we need you to bail us out. <laughs> so, that, so that was a real lesson. Um, and as I said, we put on Kingston Bridal Week, which was a seven-day bridal show. And we walked out with enough profit to cover our losses from the first show. And Maria, as you've stated, it's now 10 years down the line. So I love to share that story because, again, with successful businesses, you hear like the stories of, uh, you know, a Jeff Bezos, you know, who had his first business that collapsed. And, 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 you know, if he stopped, there would have been no Amazon. 
You know about the story of Steve Jobs, and if Steve didn't continue, there'd be no Apple. So, 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 I mean, we love to put ourselves within that space because those are people we definitely look up to. Um, so, so that really is the story behind the Kingston Bridal Week and what would have taught us the valuable lessons that we take into business today. So, I, I hope that was a good intro. Yes, yeah, man. yes, absolutely, man. Persistence. For sure, for sure. For sure. And I imagine that it was that um, experience and, 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 and ability to you know, manage not only money, people, businesses, and consumers, which then you now put you into a position to manage Splash, right? Splash well, from BET. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's another funny story because if you're going to go to Splash, then my story starts way before that. So while I was at UWE, I was actually um, a contributor the, to the Observer for Stories, and they sent me on an assignment to interview Dwight Peters um, from Saint International. Dwight said to me, Kibwe, I could have you on the runways of Milan and Paris. And I would have taken a leave of absence from school, and I'd have went away, I'd have modeled for a couple of years, and I got a hookup to go to the BT Awards. And I'm on the red carpet, I meet the execs, and long and short of it, I ended up becoming a host for a show on BET called Wicked Style. So they had wanted to actually end Wicked Style, and I would have approached them to buy out a series called Splash. So I bought out the series and I started to produce it myself, which again taught me other valuable lessons. So here it is that we, we would have gotten, for example, a lump sum of money to produce a series, and we get that money up front. Now, one thing I tell people about business, you should always have someone who's super passionate. You should have someone who's all about the dollars and the cents, someone who's watching the money. Because the problem is when you have two visionaries, two people who are passionate about a craft and an idea, you end up into, into where I'm going now. So, so we would have rented helicopters to get shots. We'd have, <laughs> we'd have done all kinds of stuff. At the end of the 13th show season, uh, if I remember correctly at the time, uh, they gave us something like 70000 US. And at the time, that's a lot of money, you know. I kid you not, we spent $74,000. We came out with a loss out of the first season. <laughs> so, which, which was very funny, which, which, which then kind of started to push me into the space of more business because I realized I could not be that person who was also the person who was passionate about the idea because then I'd spend all the money. And you had to dial back. You had to get someone who was stern about the budget and figures. And that really started making me pay attention to accounts. Um, so that's how that entire BP story happened. And we'd have had that season profitable for the next six seasons while it was on BT. So, so that, that, that's a whole nother story that would have led me into video production and media. Um, which again is part of the whole story behind an Intuit Concepts and a Kingston Bridal Week because part of Kingston Bridal Week was that we're big on the media, we're big on the marketing, we're big on the stories. So, so you can't just get up and sell without understanding the story and understanding the psychology, but also having someone who is mindful of the budget. You cannot let passion run away because passion will keep you broke. <laughs> true, true. I, I can definitely nope. see how that would work, man. So, it, and that's that's just even something remarkable to try and wrap my head around because I would have just finished university last year. So, so try and imagine being in one line of business, stepping out and uh, interviewing somebody, and then just having this life change revelation after that. As you, you say, you stopped, you you took a break from school, you went out and did modeling internationally. And then from there, you happen to get one more opportunity that just led yep. to a whole different path in time. So you're no longer in front of the camera. You're now behind the scenes entirely. Of course, it, 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 like it taught me production. So what a lot of people don't know is that, you know, Magnum Kings and Queens of Dance Hall was the most successful reality series in Jamaica. I was the creative director and a part of the Magnum Kings and Queens of Dance Hall team. I was also the person who would have spearheaded the syndication of another reality series called Jam Rest Adrenaline Rush, a show that we shot in Jamaica and Barbados. From that, it would have taught me how to handle sponsorship. I would have flown to Barbados for about two weeks 
and I'd have secured all the sponsorship necessary to ship a race car from Jamaica to put up our crew of 12 people inside a hotel to get all of the food sponsored, all of the refreshments, all of the transportation. I remember going to BMW and BMW in, in Barbados. I think at the time it was Warren's Motors. They gave us eight BMWs to drive up and down in Barbados and chase down rally cars. But that again would have set me up for, for, for the other opportunities that I had. Um, but the one thing that I must tell you that is important, which is what I like to tell people your age and younger, say yes to everything. I always knew that school wasn't going anywhere. And, 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 and just to put school into context, my, my degree is in econ and banking. But, you know, I would have said yes to an opportunity to write for a paper. I'd have said yes to an opportunity to go away and model. I'd have said yes to the opportunity to host a show on BT. I'd have, I'd have dared to even want to approach BT to say, hey, give me my own show. I will run it. I will work out how to make it profitable and I'll have it going. But all of this started from the simple three-letter word, yes. Yes. So, so exactly. I mean, you must say yes or opportunities will pass you by. It's remarkable, man. It's remarkable. So did you find it like a bit difficult for um to get a lot of these brands? Not necessarily BT would have been on the production side of things anyway. But like you said, Warren's Motors or BMW at the time to recognize the importance of getting the brand out there in, in things like reality TV, in things that might be a little bit off the wayside to them. Was that, um, was that a challenge or did they get it right away? Well, look on it this way, right? So my degree itself was in econ, but at heart, I think I'm a marketer, right? So I was always able to show the people the value in an idea. And once it has to do with lifestyle, lifestyle, you know, it, it, it connects with people. And if you understand that marketing is really a function of sales, then ultimately right. what you are is a glorified salesman. So, <laughs> so, so of course. So, so once I could pitch and show them the value, I mean, we were on TV for 13 weeks, right? And if I have your cars as a part of my television show for 13 weeks, then what do you pay for a 30 second ad? And if I knew what you pay for a 30 second ad, then I can damn well tell you what it costs to be running on a series for 13 weeks with five minutes of features. And by that time, it became a no brainer. Like you'd be stupid not to take up this offer because here it is, I'm giving you value. That is it, you know. Can you convince someone that what you're giving them is value? So what, what, once, once you can pinpoint that and show them what the value is, then after that, they're going to come on board. And the great thing about getting a sponsor like BMW is that it shows the caliber of sponsors. Exactly. So then other sponsors exactly. come on board. So, so with that, I mean, it was, it was then easy to do the same thing with a Kingston Bridal Week, the same thing with a Wedding Spectacular, because it really became about selling and understanding what was valuable to people and how that connected with the consumer. Man, that's crazy, man. And if you guys were taking any notes earlier in the month, it is always present the value. Present the nope. value and nobody can ever deny you. Nope, 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 not at all. Nope.